What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today we have another WWE action figure set up for you guys and today it is Backlash Edition. So in today's video, guys, we do have another WWE action figure set up for you guys. I got the whole performance center slash backstage area filled up for you guys. I'm very excited to get through it. You know, Backlash is coming up on this Sunday, and I'm super excited to get into it and talk about all of the things that are going down. Now, some of the things in this video may not happen, or they, you know, could change or something like that. But we'll get into all that as we get into the setup. But I am super excited to take you guys through it. I got all the stuff filled out. I'm ready to go. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and start off in this corner and start off with the medical area. Alright guys, so if we come over here to the medical area, you will notice Jinder Football Mahal on the stretcher. Now, Jinder Mahal just came back from injury, right? But then he got injured again, so I did want to stick him over here in the medical area. I think he was actually in line to be the next contender for Drew McIntyre's WWE Championship, but he got injured and I guess we were spared of that feud. You know, I'm not, I'm not a huge Jinder Mahal fan, but I think he gets the shit into the stick a lot of the time. And I don't know, man. It just is. It's kind of. It's kind of crazy the amount of hate he gets. I think he's a pretty good character. He's just not the best in the ring. But I think they could have had some good mic back and forth between Drew and Jinder, giving the three man band background. But Jinder Mahal, speedy recovery for him. Prayers up for Jinder Mahal. I hope he returns safely to the ring when he does return. If we come forward a little bit, guys, we do have the weight room right here, and we will notice that we have Otis, and he is bench pressing Mandy Rose right there. You guys can see Money in the Bank briefcase. I thought this was a unique shot. I just had the idea pop up. Since since they don't have a match at Backlash, I figured they could mess around in the backstage area doing what they like to do. You know, they're the odd couple running around WWE right now. They're in the weight room messing around, and I figured that'd be a pretty cool little shot. So I have Otis in the Money in the Bank briefcase with Mandy Rose right there. And if we come to the left just a little bit, you will see Bailey Two Belts or Bailey Dose Straps is what she's calling herself on Twitter, which is kind of weird. But you have Sasha Banks and Bailey, the women's tag team champion slash SmackDown women's champion, and they are just chilling. And if we go behind the weight room, a little bit. You will notice that Alexa Bliss and the Iconics and Nikki Cross are all battling together. They obviously have a big triple threat tag team match for the Women's Tag Team Championships, but I figured that Bayley and Sasha should be able to take care of that no problem, no issues, and so they're just chilling. They're not worried about it. They got their two straps. They're not worried about the Iconics or Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross, and I'm not big on those two teams anyway, so I think Bayley and Sasha should be able to get the job done, so they're just chilling. They're no stress, no stress at all. They're just cool and all relaxed and all shooting some b-ball outside of the school if you get what I'm saying. So if we come to the right a little bit guys you will see that we have the WWE Champion Drew McIntyre about to lay out Bobby Trashley, Bobby Lashley with the trash can on his head. About to take a huge claymore into the skull just like the trash. No trash Corbin in this setup so I had to make do with what I got with Bobby Trashley. About to hit him with a claymore kick. Explosion about to take place here. WWE Championship on the ground. You will see MVP. I'm actually in the process of making us a manager style MVP where he's not in wrestling gear and he's going to have the correct hair. I'm in the process of making one of those so hopefully I can show that all very soon but Drew McIntyre about to hit the Claymore kick love that running pose right there about to deliver a smashing kick to the face of Bobby Trashley and I wanted to include that in my setup for sure so I think that Drew McIntyre will take care of Bobby Lashley in the championship match come Sunday at Backlash and I'm actually already looking forward to who he fights next. Hopefully it's not Trash Corbin. If we come behind that guys you will see that we have Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles now, AJ Styles is holding up the Intercontinental Championship. They are having the finals, I do believe, this Friday on SmackDown for the Intercontinental Championship. So, at time of recording, neither of these men are the Intercontinental Champion. So, I am going to go ahead and put a disclaimer right here that it could be Daniel Bryan holding up the championship. And I'm not sure whoever... Oh my god, what the blue hell was that? I'm not sure who is going to win the championship. I'm actually fine with either of these guys winning. And I'm not sure whoever does win the championship if there will be a rematch on Sunday at Backlash. You would think there'd be a rematch, but who knows? You know, WWE may not want to rush a, you know, a rematch that quickly, or it may not call for a rematch. We'll just have to see. Maybe we could see like a false finish or something happen in the championship match on Friday, and then they have to have the finals on Sunday because maybe we have a no decision or something like that on SmackDown. But we will have to find that out. I have AJ Styles winning the championship in this setup particularly. Come to the middle, guys. You have the United States champion, Apollo Crews, and he is worried because Andrade just got hit with a center by my boy, 
RKO. Now, this is something that happened on Monday Night Raw. Kevin Owens did lose in a triple threat match to Angel Garza and Andrade, and Angel Garza also lost. Andrade won the triple threat number one contenders match for the United States Championship, so he will be going on to Backlash to take on Apollo Crews, so I have Kevin Owens getting a little revenge here in the setup and taking out Andrade, saying, you know what, Brad, that's my championship opportunity. I was really bummed out that he didn't win the opportunity. I really wanted Kevin Owens to win that matchup. Did not happen, so I'm going to have Kevin Owens getting some revenge right here, and I hope that whatever takes place at this match, that Apollo Crews does retain the championship, because I think he does need a nice, long reign. He needs to lift up the U.S. championship. He needs to build his character up. This is a great opportunity for him to take himself to the next level in his character and everything like that, so hopefully he can do so with a good long reign. Hopefully they let him do that, but we're going to move on, guys. We have Sheamus back here. One of my favorite feuds going on right now on SmackDown. Got a little realism thrown in. You can see Sheamus laid out on this storage unit, and if we look up to the top, you will see we have Jeff Hardy on top of that scaffolding stack little table thing. I don't know what the hell that is. I think it's supposed to be scaffolding, but Jeff Hardy's up there about to come raining down on Sheamus. Now, this feud has got some pretty, you know, deep stuff going on with it, so I would hope that there's some aggression going on. There's some tenacity going on. They should not start this matchup with, a, you know, a lockup or any technical base stuff. They should definitely go at each other because of, you know, the, the circumstances of the feud. Bringing up Jeff Hardy's dark past and everything, hopefully this man will go to war with him. I'm kind of surprised we didn't get a stipulation match. Maybe the next match they have after this at Backlash will be a stipulation style match, but Sheamus is laid out, and I kind of want to drop Jeff Hardy onto him at the end of the video, so we're probably going to do that here, and we actually have a few things that we're going to drop onto people to have the result of what is taking place, so I hope Jeff Hardy picks up the win over Sheamus. Hopefully, they don't, like, bury him and him get released or something like that. I hope that, you know, they do build him up to get his little comeuppets, but let's move on, guys. To the right, we do have Aleister Black getting attacked by Buddy Murphy and Seth Rollins. They do not have a match set for Backlash, and Seth Rollins does not have a match with uh, Rey Mysterio or anything like that quite booked yet, and it may happen. You know, they at the time of recording, they may not have a match, but by the time you see this or by the time we get to Sunday, we could have a matchup. So Aleister Black getting jumped by Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy. You could add all. You could add Austin Theory here, but I don't have a figure of him just yet. But Rey Mysterio is up on this scaffolding little crane thing, and I'm going to have him jump off onto those guys, and we'll do that too. We'll do Jeff Hardy onto Sheamus, and then after that, we will do Rey Mysterio onto these guys, taking all of them out and, you know, progressing that feud that they got going. If we come forward a little bit, guys, you will see that we have Asuka battling with Nia Jax. This is our Raw Women's Championship match that is taking place at Backlash, and I think that Asuka should handle Nia Jax. You know, I don't think a lot of people are big fans of Nia Jax. I have not ever been a fan of her, and I think that we should continue. Asuka is probably my favorite women's wrestler in the world right now, so I think that she should take care of Nia Jax, retain her Raw Women's Championship, and we're probably going to get a Charlotte feud after that. I was going to include Charlotte in the setup, but I decided against it, and, uh, you know, we get enough of Charlotte these days, so Asuka is kicking Nia Jax in the face, and that's okay with me. Hopefully, we get a retain out of her for the Raw Women's Championship. If we come down a little bit, guys, you will see this car crushing the vertebrae in the body of Miz and Morrison, and that is because they are taking on the Monster Among Men. They are taking on Braun Strowman at Backlash, and he is holding up his championship because there is no way that this two-on-one handicap match is going to go well for Miz and Morrison. May wait, we may get a good match. I'm not invested in it, but I think that Braun Strowman is going to easily take care of these two guys, and Braun Strowman is going to be hoisting up that Blue Universal Championship at the end of the night, so if we get all of the good stuff right there, yeah, I think Miz and Morrison are taken care of, and that Braun Strowman is definitely going to be retaining that championship in that handicap match, and if we go to the last part of our setup, guys, we will have Randy Orton and Edge. I think this is the big build match. It's the best wrestling match ever is what they're calling it. I don't think anybody thinks they're really going to live up to that expectation, but since this uh, feud has run for, for over 10 years, man, I mean, this feud runs deep. We have Randy Orton slamming a truck door onto Edge's head. I know their last matchup was kind of weaponry and, you know, all over the place at WrestleMania, but uh, I, I just felt that this was sort of creative. I wanted to get usage out of this truck, and I figured this was kind of the sadistic style of Randy Orton slamming Edge's head into the truck door and smashing his skull, and that kind of fit the character of Randy Orton and the Viper right there, so that is it. And I don't know if they're going to be able to, you know, I, I don't even know how good the match is going to be. I wouldn't imagine it would be the best wrestling match ever. It's pretty ridiculous. They're not going to uphold the best wrestling match ever. That's such a subjective thing, and that's just ridiculous. There's no way that will ever occur, but let's hope they try their best to. I would like to see it, and we'll have to see about that, but that is pretty much our WWE Backlash 2020 edition of the setup. I had a ton of fun doing these. The setups are always my favorite. I think if I had to pick a favorite portion of the setup, I would either go with the Bobby Trashley Claymore kick, the Jeff Hardy, 
jumping off the scaffolding onto Seamus on the storage unit. Or this right here, which is probably my favorite portion. It is Otis doing a bench press to Mandy and uh, having the money in the bank briefcase right there. I just like that visual. I think it's pretty funny and unique. But anyways, guys, that is going to do it for the setup. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Let me know what your predictions are for Backlash. My official predictions will probably be coming in the next couple days. But that does it for my setup, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at My Damn Toys, and I'll see you guys in the... Oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. I almost forgot. I gotta do the jump off stuff. I gotta get the I gotta get the Rey Mysterio coming down on the... Oh my god, why are you hooking right here? We gotta get Rey Mysterio coming down and oh, taking out the field. Beautiful stuff by Rey Mysterio. And then we come over here to Jeff Hardy, and Jeff Hardy comes off and play... Oh, I didn't like that. Let's redo it. Little, little running back, running back. Coming off, little Swanton bomb onto Sheamus, and he cracks his vertebrae on the storage unit. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Kevin Owens is the best, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. One more for good measure. Drew McIntyre coming across with a Claymore kick, taking out Bobby Trashley.